Hello everybody, it's me again, and welcome back to part number 11 of Let's Replay Assassin's Creed 2. We- does that woman have a beard? No. <laughs> okay, so we just, uh, discovered that the Pazzi, uh, led by Francesco, are going to attack the Medici during high mass outside the Duomo. Um, yeah, so we have to stop them, like, immediately. So we're gonna head over to the next objective right now. I haven't played this in a couple weeks, actually. And in case you haven't noticed, I have a new microphone. And, uh, let me know how it is compared to the other one. Because the other one was... Fuck you. Well, that's a nice start off, isn't it? Um, uh, I know my other microphone was pretty muffled. And the quality wasn't very great. It was rather quiet, too, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, I got this new one. I'm- I still need to- ah, oh, fuck. I still need to mess with the settings a little bit. So, uh, tell me if something is not up to par, and, uh, I'll start working on it. I could have had at least two videos recorded already today. It's almost 11. But, uh, Windows 8 sucks, in case y'all didn't know. Beautiful, glorious Windows 8 sucks. Ass. This is the Medici's house, isn't it? Wolves in sheep's clothing prevent the conspirators from attacking the Medici family. Oh, shit! Okay. Let me just double check all my stuff, make sure I'm going, and I am going. Okay, sweet. Locate Francesco de Pazzi. I'm gonna get up high on the... High up on the... Okay, I can't climb. Never mind then, I just clicked in the left stick. Deactivate eagle vision? Oh my word. I know there's an assassin tomb here somewhere. There he is. I see him in his stupid little hat! There's Lorenzo and his wife. There's Something Giuliano, Lorenzo's not good's brother. about to happen. Where's Francesco? There he is. Time to strike. Uh, you have time to strike before they kill a shit ton of people. Oh, even the priest was in on it. Damn. Holy shit, dude. Okay. He's exceptionally pissed off. You know, I could have jumped in and saved that kid's life. He's a kid. His brother's dead. Life. Your entire family dies by my sword! Oh, I don't think so! Hey, yeah, hey! No, don't ignore me! Alright. I meant to counter Francesco, but he and the guard attacked at the same time. Screw you! Lorenzo is getting beat up. If I had smoke bombs, I would so use one right now. The last second panic button of Assassin's Creed. Ow. Stop! Kick to the balls! Stop it! No! Lorenzo will not die by my hand! Or on my watch. I mean, I'm not gonna kill him. It's early, okay? It's the first thing I've done today besides eat a blueberry muffin. Cut me some slack. Fuck you, Francesco! I can't hit him for some reason. Oh, he's running. He ran. All right. You're perfectly okay with killing, so long as the person you're trying to kill doesn't fight back, huh? Godardo. Take a couple more hits, Lorenzo. Aya! You saved my life. I did. It's nothing. When I did this to you, ask to pay. Not now. I need help first. To my home. People I trust. Can you? Of course, ah. yes. I could have. I just sat there and watched him slaughter his entire family. I'm like, time to strike. But let's wait class. another 30 seconds before I intervene. Hang on, signore. I'm moving as fast as I can. Okay, well, I just reduced my notoriety, now it's right back up again, so that's nice. Oh, okay. Right. 
I'll wipe his entire oh, family Lord. from the city. They'll be arranged. Sounds good to me. We ain't that heavy, Signore. Conserve your energy while we delivering a corpse. We're almost there now. Cut through this alley. Oh, this alley is much better. Ah, shoot. Excuse me. Pardon me. Move out of the way. Shit. Assassino! Assassino! Alright, here we go. You wanna call me that? You better back it up with something. You gonna back it up with something? Doesn't look like it. Anybody else? Ah! Someone just shot me! Sniper! Are you? I had hoped. Hey, 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 hey! Stop it! I'm more than capable of cutting you Maybe if you were perfectly healthy, which you're not. Let's do it. No, no shit, game. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Uh, now where is his house? It's down here. All right, Lorenzo. We made it. Give them your safe right. word, password, whatever. Lorenzo has been wounded. Aprite la porta! What's the password? Polizia, open the maledetta porta! Open the fucking door! Quickly! The city is at war! Hurry! Wait. I am in your debt. Tell me, why did you help me? You are not the only one who lost a brother to the Pazzi. My name is Ezio Auditore. Ah. You are Giovanni's son. Yep. Your father was a good man. He understood honor, loyalty. It's my father, the Ned Stark. The of serving the Palazzo della Signoria. We cannot hold them off much longer. No. If they get inside, they'll murder our supporters and put their own devils in power. Then my survival would mean nothing. I have to... No, I'll do it for uh, you. Sit down. I'll do it. Uh, Francesco de Pazzi. Help save our city, Auditore. Kill him. My pleasure. I'm actually rewatching Game of Thrones right now. We're in the middle of season two. And, uh... It was my fifth time watching season one, and I'm right now in the process of watching season two for the fifth time. So I've seen that show a lot. And I'm reading the books right now, too. Ooh! Let's get a database on Francesco, Francesco de Pazzi. Francesco de Pazzi. Brought up as a noble in a city captivated by the newly rich Medici family, Francesco was taught to hate the middle class and its social climbers. Dismayed, he watched as the Medici bank eclipsed his own and centuries of influence over the Florentine government slipped away. It looks like the Spaniard offered him a solution. Rodrigo Rather than compete in something as dirty as banking, Francesco only had to do one thing for the Templars, one thing to put the middle class in their place for good. Kill the Medici. Giovanni Auditore tried to stop Francesco by putting him oh, in jail. Oh, don't. Why? The Templars took care of that. I don't want to see that again. That's terrible. Wow. So he hates the middle class, huh? I should probably steer clear of this guy. <laughs> ah, I was going to say something and I completely forgot. It's probably... Has to do with the fact that I'm blonde, sort of. You can see my ponytail sticking out. It's still partially blue. But the blue's fading out really fast because I didn't dye it properly. So I ordered another bottle, so I'm gonna dye it again Signori, soon. That's why I'm hiding I it under Francesco a frog hat. I <laughs> a battalion around the back of the Palazzo della Signoria. I fear he may be seeking another way in. Oh, oh so it's early in the morning. That's the only reason. Do what you can! I shall do what I can. Farewell, Francesco. Find and kill Francesco de Pazzi. Okay. Oh, right. That's, that's the thing I was gonna say. Um, while well, watching that Assassin's Den podcast with, uh, Roger Craig Smith. Assassin's Den is fantastic, by the way. It's a great podcast for voice actors and people in the, uh, the, uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, development community. It's really, really a great podcast. You should totally watch some episodes. They've got people like Noah Watts, Adrian Hugh, um, Roger Craig Smith, uh, the voice actress of Mary Reed, uh, I don't remember her name, which I'm sorry to say. Ow, I missed the banner. But, um, there was uh, one thing that Roger Craig Smith said that was really difficult for him to pronounce, and that was Rodrigo Borja. 
Also, uh, he said uh, Savonarola, which was one of the names from the uh, Bonfire of the Vanities DLC. But he's told some really funny stories, and he does so many different voices, and it's just fantastic. Speaking of which, uh, the Jeopardy! Battle of the Decades uh, finale was on last night and night before last. And um, there was a dude on it named Roger Craig, and he... I'll tell you after this right here, but just... Woo! You again! Why aren't you dead? Man! Slaughter him! Do I look like someone who's easily killed? Okay, anyway. So, on Jeopardy! Battle of the Decades two-part finale. There was a dude on it, one of the finalists, and his name was Roger Craig. Biggest daredevil I've ever seen, and not in a good way. The first day, um, he found a daily double, and he had over $10,000 already. And he went true daily double, which is double or nothing. If he gets the question wrong, he goes back to zero. And he got the question wrong. So he lost everything. Hold on! Fuck you. So, this is the Ooh. <laughs> I'm trying to tell a story. But anyway, so yesterday. Yes, I have. Uh, we'll see. Your only delay, your inevitable and painful end. God! God! I'm still trying to tell the story. It's just us now. Maledetto che il diavolo ti porti! Stavi lontano! Oh shit, he jumped. Ah! Don't hit me! I'm trying to do something at the moment! There he goes. Anyway, so Roger Craig. Part two of the finale, which was last night. He got another daily double. And everyone's thinking, he's not stupid enough to go double or nothing again. He did. And he lost it again, and once again he had over two thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. So, like he, and he got third place. He still won fifty grand, but still, like seriously, he was stupid and dumb and reckless and not the good kind of daredevil. There you are. Ah, grab onto the house. Do you want to get up there, Ezio? I'm holding it up. Okay, so now I'm I'm, I'm totally distracted from the game now. I wonder I haven't caught him yet. Come here! I'm not distracted by storytelling anymore. Oh, I couldn't air assassinate him there, really? Oh, you fucker. You motherfucker. Gotcha! There we go. Only had to chase him around half the goddamn city because I was too busy telling a story. Now Firenze will judge you for what you've done. It's over. It's all over. For you, perhaps. But not for me. Meglio essere felici in questa vita e aspirare a esserlo nella prossima. Requiescat in pace. Ah! Oh, like, I forgot about this art. so cool. Jacopo just looks up and he's like, Oh shit! Oh, that's eerie. He's going back to the boss man. There's me admiring my handiwork. <laughs> oh, my God. He just looks up and he's like, Francesco? It's like those, like, uh, caricatures you see online of, like, the tomato looking at the ketchup or something and going, Mommy? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I want to find more Codex pages. I like reading about Altair from Altair's point of view. I love Altair. 1478. I believe this is the scene now where uh, Lorenzo talks about how he, his family and my family 
uh, became friends when we're on that bridge where we first started. Yeah, here we go. Lorenzo, hello! What a view. Ooh! Let's read about Lorenzo! Ruler of Florence. <laughs> Simultaneously keeping the dream of the Florentine Republic alive while leaving the leaving the people with very little legitimate power, Lorenzo de' Medici deftly ruled Renaissance Florence during the, its golden age. <laughs> Sorry, I just woke up, I know. Lorenzo's grandfather, Cosimo, built the Medici Bank, creating one of the most powerful financial institutions in Europe and becoming fabulously rich in the process. Considered the smartest of Cosimo's grandchildren, Lorenzo was already being sent on diplomatic missions as a child. Although his father was inept and sickly, his mother was a poet. She introduced Lorenzo to many of the prominent artists of the day, instilling in him a love of art and culture. In 1469, when he was only 20, Lorenzo became the head of the Medici family, at which point he quickly gained control of the Florentine government through friends in the city, council, payoffs, strategic marriages, and threats. But Florence prospered with Lorenzo as its puppeteer. A peace was made between the warring states of Italy, and several masterpieces of Renaissance art by the likes of Botticelli and Michelangelo were made under his care. Ultimately, Lorenzo was happier writing poetry and shadow governing than directing his family's bank. During his lifetime, several branches of the bank collapsed, and the Medici assets were wasted on frivolities such as jousting tournaments. Lorenzo died in 1492. Nearly broke, he was unable to prevent the popular backlash against his rich lifestyle and the mad monk Savonarola's rise to power, which is the Bonfire of the Vanities DLC. So it just says he died. How did he die? Hmm. Alright, hello, Lorenzo. So I only knew him when personally for a few old, years. I fell into the Arno. I soon found Arno, eh? Drifting down <laughs> into darkness. Certain my life was at an end. Instead, I woke to the sound of my mother weeping. At her side stood a stranger, soaking and smiling at me. My mother explained that he had saved me. And so began a long and prosperous relationship between two families. Yours and mine. Giovanni saved I am him sorry from drowning I could in not the river. Save your father and brothers. You have nothing to apologize for. I believe Jacobo de Pazzi played a part in their deaths. They attack on you as well. I need to find him. That coward fled before we could arrest him. Have you any leads? I saw it. No. They've hidden themselves well. Hey. Jacopo was not the only conspirator to escape. If they work with Jacopo, they were surely involved in the plot against my family as well. Give me their names. names. Antonio Maffei, Archbishop Francesco Salviati, Stefano da Bagnone, and Bernardo Baroncelli. Bene, I will go and see my uncle. He has men stationed in the countryside. Wait, before you go, a codex page. I hey! I just said I wanted more. Pazzi, Thank you, Lorenzo. Seeing as he clearly no longer needs it. Nope. I've always had an interest in things of antiquity. Ah. As did your father. As do He's I. Meaningful to me as well. Then consider it a gift. Che il Signore ci protegga. Like, I mean, besides the Assassin's Creed books by Oliver Bowden, I can't read, I mean Game of Thrones as well, I can't read any books if they're not history books. Like, that's most of the books I read are history books. The Pazzi Conspirators, is this Jacopo a video? Jacopo di Pazzi. Here we go. The money. This guy was the head of the Pazzi family, and he ran their banking business. An associate of Lorenzo de' Medici, he had nothing against him personally. So he hired four Templar hitmen to take care of the situation for him. Bernardo di Bandino Baroncelli. Brought up to hate the Medici family for the exile of his cousins, Baroncelli ran the numbers in the Pazzi bank by day and murdered for the Templars at night. It was Baroncelli who delivered the first blow. Yeah, Stefano remember. de Bagnone. Known for his cruelty, Bagnone was trained in Rome as a Templar butcher. It was Bagnone who stabbed Lorenzo de Medici in the back. Antonio Maffei. Witness to the sacking of Volterra by Florentine mercenaries. Maffei blamed Lorenzo. He joined the Templars to seek revenge. It was Maffei who slashed Lorenzo's neck. Archbishop Francesco Salviati, 
Convinced he would be the next Archbishop of Florence, Salviati was enraged when Lorenzo stood in his way. But the Templars were there to heal his wounds. It was Salviati who marched their troops into the city. All right. There's not a whole lot written about these guys besides their birth dates and their professions, which we pretty much already know. All right. Looks like we have another five on our list. Ooh, assassination contracts unlocked. We're not going to do any of those, though, until I unlock all the cities. I still have to get to Venice and Forli and connect it. I've marked the Palazzo Medici on your map. In order to achieve 100% sync with Ezio's life, you should go explore it. Okay. Oh, that's right! I remember this! Oh, so long ago. Isn't it a Uplay thing? I think I got it on Uplay. It's like an exclusive Templar hideout mission. Uh, people broke into Lorenzo's home and, like, completely ransacked it looking for him. I won't go into too much more detail in case you guys don't know, but I'll save that for a shenanigans episode. Right now we're going with the main story. However, I am afraid that I am all out of time. So, uh... Hi. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, I'll pick this up in the next episode. So I hope you guys are enjoying my replay of Assassin's Creed 2. Like and favorite if you are. Subscribe if you want to see more. Be sure to check out my Facebook and Twitter. And I will see you in my next video. Farewell, friends. Help me!